In this video, we're gonna take a trip down memory lane and go back to season three of The Office where Pam, unfortunately, drank some spoiled milk. But, as always, there are some very valuable lessons that we can learn from these episodes that can teach us how to avoid the same mistakes. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, sometimes what I like to do is pull different topics from movies, TV shows, music, pop culture, all that kind of stuff to see what lessons we can learn from them. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, my beautiful girlfriend Tristan and I, we've been binge watching The Office. We just made it to season three and I have a ton, a ton of topics to talk about from this show and there's so many lessons that we can learn. But like I said, in this video specifically, I wanna focus on Pam in season three, in the beginning of season three, first half of it, I think we're on uh, episode 15 or 16, but we're gonna be talking about spoiled milk so let's set the scene for season three so season three starts out with jim at the other office because he transferred because at the end of season two he confessed his love for pam right after pam uh, got engaged to roy and she was planning the wedding and i believe it was at casino night and he went and he kissed her and she kind of shut him down but anyways, he ended up transferring. He's just like, you know what? I'm done with this whole Pam thing. So he goes to the new office where he meets Karen, played by Rashida Jones. And they end up starting to date, but that brand shuts down. So he comes back to the good old office where he started out. Now, you can obviously see that Pam is upset about this. Jim still has feelings for Pam, but he's trying to hide him because you know, obviously he's, he's with Karen, but Pam is very, very upset about this. Um, there is even a scene where she's crying and Dwight comes to console her, thinking that, uh, you know, she's having her monthly. But anyways, Pam is clearly upset about this. Now, at this point in uh, the series, Pam has also broken off her engagement from Roy. Roy looks different, he's been getting into shape. I think he mentioned that he got a DUI as well, but he still obviously has a thing for Pam and he keeps trying to pursue her. He's always figuring out ways to go up to the office and talk to her and all of that, right? Well, anyways, in Pam's you know sadness about Jim's new relationship with Karen, Pam starts finding Roy to be a little bit better. So what ends up happening is at the wedding of Phyllis and uh, Bob Vance from Vance Refrigeration. Uh, Roy ends up having the, the band play their song. He dances with Pam outside. He's like, yo, you wanna get out of here? And Pam is upset because Jim is with Karen, right? So Pam ends up saying, sure, Roy. And she ends up you know, going back to his place and they start dating again. And here's where things get tricky, all right? Because what you see from Pam and Roy is that although Roy tried to change some things about himself, like Roy is still Roy. Roy is still very inconsiderate, self-centered, thinking about himself, not giving his all to the relationship, not thinking as much about Pam's need. And we start to see this come to fruition when Pam has her art show and Roy doesn't wanna go, right? But it also shows up when they're all going out for drinks and Roy doesn't wanna go. He just wanted to hang out with his brother and get messed up, right? And even when Roy shows up to the art show with his brother, he ends up bouncing pretty soon so they can go out and drink and party. And something that Pam is realizing is that Roy hasn't changed that much even though Pam is saying that she's like setting these boundaries and she's saying what she wants and all of that kind of stuff. So anyways, now you're sitting here saying, Chris, what you talking about with spoiled milk? Well, many years ago, one of my mentors, um, when I was a, a younger buck back in my 20s, he taught me about the spoiled milk philosophy. And here's what it is. Please pay attention, write it down, ingrain it in your brain, all right? What he taught me, because I, I've always been somebody who uh, went back to exes, right? Like I spent a lot of my 20s doing this and it never worked out. And something he explained to me, he's like, Chris, going back to an ex is like pulling milk out of the fridge, drinking it, realizing it's spoiled, putting it back into the fridge, and then coming back days, weeks, months, years later, and trying to drink from it again, thinking that it's gonna be better, right? Because basically what he was telling me is that like the relationship ended for a reason. You know, and we get into this idea, this fantasy that things are going to be better. Now, something Pam even admits, um, I think it was to Kelly, is when her and Roy get back together, is Pam says that it's familiar. And from my experience, from my experience, just my own personal experience, as well as talking with others who have that tendency to drink that spoiled milk, 
is this is extremely common. A lot of people get back with their exes because it's comfortable, it's safe, right? Like how many of us have this fear of rejection? You know what I mean? Like that is one of the reasons why being single is so difficult um, because you have this fear of being rejected. You got on the dates, you know, there's the whole courting phase, like, you know, I like them, do they like me? How much do they like me? And all these other things and all this back and forth and you're just going crazy, right? There's so much of that. And then even when be becoming committed to a new person or meeting that new person, then there's that fear. Is this person gonna hurt me? What? What don't I know about this person? Are there any skeletons in their closet? You know, what happens when, you know, we go through a difficult time? How are they gonna react to that? There's so many unknowns. And we as human beings hate, 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 hate having unknowns. So when you combine all of these things together, this is often why we go back to exes because we know that person likes us. We know they're attracted to us. We know what they're all about. So there's a huge part of us that believes or that even justifies like, you know what? I would rather get back with this person hoping that they change their, their certain things about them than trying to experiment with something new. And this is how a lot of us get caught up getting back into a previous relationship. And I would love to hear from all of you down in the comments below. Have you gotten back with an ex and how did it work out? Like, let me know down in the comments. I have seen some people where they said, yeah, it did work out. Don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. This, this can work. Just from my personal experience, not just my own, but also speaking with a ton of other people and you know, friends, family members, uh, clients I had when I was working at the treatment center and all of that, like I see a lot of people do this and just like a rough estimate off the top of my head, 90% of the time it doesn't work. So there are always going to be exceptions to the rule of, you know, oh, well, you know, they went out and they, you know, they got better and, you know, they, they went to therapy or they went to, you know, uh, treatment and got sober or whatever it is. Like sometimes this can work. But in most cases, a lot of people don't change, all right? And that, that sounds pretty rough to say, but it's just the reality of it. Like, whenever I bring up that point with people, like, I just want you to ask yourself, like, when has been a time when you went through, like, a massive, a massive personality change, right? Like, how many times have, have you been stuck in a relationship for way too long waiting on the other person to change? Like, I just want you to think about that for a minute, right? So think about that. And, like, something that helped me out when I was back in the dating scene and everything before I got with my beautiful girlfriend, um, like... I don't like wasting time, right? Like, I am a firm believer when somebody shows you who they are, like, believe them. And like, when I was even just in the talking phase and I saw all these things coming up, like one of them is somebody fighting with you very early on in a relationship. One of them is them not supporting like your passions, uh, things that you like to do, your hobbies or whatever it is, or you know, they don't wanna hang out with your friends or whatever the case is. Like if you see that early on in a relationship, in my opinion, that is a major, major red flag, all right? But anyways, I'm not sure what's gonna happen with Pam and Roy in this season. Um, <laughs> the series ended like some years ago, so I already know like, most of what happens and all of that, but I won't spoil it for any of you who just started the watching, uh, watching The Office like I did. But anyways, again, let me know down in the comments below if you've ever gotten back with an ex. How did it work out? Was it a good decision, bad decision? I put up a poll the other day on the community tab as well, um, asking you guys if you've ever dated somebody in the office and how did that work out? And a lot of you, <laughs> uh, I think right now, the majority of you said it was the worst decision of your life. And that's something that I do wanna talk about because a lot of people in this office specifically Jim, dates a lot of coworkers, and oftentimes that's not a very good idea. So that'll be a video that's coming up uh, in the near future, as well as some videos about Michael Scott, and I think, you know, Meredith, she's an interesting character just because, you know, um, I was an alcoholic for many years. Uh, I think Kelly is a fascinating character, her relationship with Ryan, that's something else. Like, there's so many relationship topics from this show. But anyways, show is hilarious. We binge watch it almost on the nightly. So if there are any other topics that you want me to discuss, um, let me know down in the comments below. There's actually an article I found about, uh, well, actually Tristan found about Michael Scott like being a narcissist. It's like extremely long too, and I want to dive into that. Anyways, anyways, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to go do some stuff. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, 
Huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you are a patron, don't forget, go check out the site because the brand new Q&A, I answered all your questions, that is up now. If you want to become a patron, you can click or tap right there on that icon, all right? So thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.